Forgive me. We're going to read in John, New Testament. Chapter 10, John 10, verse 14. Fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. John New Testament ten, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. The word of the Lord says the following I'm the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. And am known by my own. And the Father knows me. Even so, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd Lord, we pray that you bless your message and bless your people your church those that are here in this place and whatever they are that you may still bless them in the benefit of their lives we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated.
the Lord tonight He has shown through a spiritual gift. The Lord uh, has shown a, a, a train station, a station where people wait for the um, passage of a train. There's a song, a children's song, that says, "On the express we travel to the uh, <coughs> land of light. Our passport, our ticket, or what gives us." Um, access to um, the Lord, to the entrance to the place is the Lord Jesus. And Jesus also says, I desire to, uh, I want to give an opportunity for those who want to enter into this train. So the Lord is showing that He's giving tonight another opportunity to enter into this project of God which is traveling towards eternity and the Lord Jesus says that he is this door he is this access he is this opportunity that God God gives us in order for us to go back to a place that we came from, the place that we left, which is the eternity of God, the presence of God. And the Lord Jesus, He says that He is this door. And He says that whoever enters through Him, He will enter and He will leave and He will save Himself and He will find pastures. Or in other words, you find the sustenance that is necessary for him to continue to live. And you who are here tonight, you who came to the house of the Lord tonight, this Jesus, this door, this access, this opportunity that you have to be in the presence of God, He's telling you, my brother and sister, that He desires, above all, He desires to save you. On Psalm 23, it says, of uh, the Lord as our shepherd, our guide, our protector, our helper, the one that can answer to all our necessities. Speaks of uh, green pastures and crystal clear waters. Speaks of refreshing of the soul. Speaks of inhabiting with the Lord all the days of your life. Speaks of rest in Jesus when he looks to a multitude, he says, and you will find rest for your soul. And we just read a text of the word that says that he is the good shepherd. There are here two pastors present, but none of us is good. There are thousands and thousands, millions and millions of pastors. But none of them is good. They are pastors, but they are not good. The book of Psalms says that how good is the Lord. Well, the Lord is good. And this is about this Lord that we are talking about, this good shepherd. Sometimes, man, you who are here tonight, you may have been disappointed with the pastor from your de own denomination, from this denomination. It doesn't matter which denomination. 
you may even have been frustrated, may have been uh, may have gotten upset with the pastor. But we are speaking about the good shepherd. And the good shepherd, he'll never frustrate you. He'll never upset you. He'll never leave you. Jesus himself <laughs> speaks of uh, the story of five sheep. One sheep just ran away, fled. If it was a shepherd, you would think, you would say, nine, nine, well, I'm still having profit. But the good shepherd, good shepherd thinks differently. You, you left the 99 here in the shelter. I'm going to go to find the one that was that ran away. You know why? Because he knows the price that he paid for that ship. That ship is special for the Good Shepherd. Because that ship was purchased with not with gold, not with precious stones or dollars with precious things but with, with his precious blood and the sheep has to give proper worth to this give proper worth to the high price that this good shepherd paid for your life And he said, I am good shepherd, and I know my sheep. At one point in time, the servant said, Lord, search my heart and know my heart. Uh, search and test my thoughts and see if there is any bad way in me and guide me towards the right path. And he knew that God knew himself better than he knew himself. And this good shepherd, he knows me even better than I know myself. Because he is the one who made me. And he knows uh, what is my constitution, my structure, my fragility, my problems of my adversities, of my anguishes, of my pains, of my sins, and of my transgressions. He knows. But he is the Good Shepherd. And he um, taking knowledge of who I am, he does not judge me. He gives me support, he loves me, and he protects me. This is the Good Shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am the Good Shepherd. And I know my sheep. He know each one of us who are here. And I say something, particularly with you, my sister. This good shepherd. And that's he said something specifically to you tonight. I don't know who you are, but the good shepherd knows. And he asked that, so that the uh, before the message, a uh, song be sang here tonight. And the song was Harsh Cross. It was erected on a beautiful day. And the cross, he perished. Despised, he died, my Jesus, to give me forgiveness.
It was for you, my sister. Who came here thinking that the the path is taking too long and is thinking about giving up. The longer path was the one that Jesus had to go through to bring eternity to you, to give your life, to give his life for love of my and our lives. I am the, the Bible says, I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep. And what is interesting about all of it is that the sheep, and he speaks about this, he says, and uh, my sheep know me. My brother, how wonderful this is. When the Lord says, the Lord speaks and we recognize him. I know that, that when the song was sang, when we praise the Lord, uh, rush cross, uh, um, you realize that it was the Lord who was speaking with you. Because you are the sheep of the Lord. And he says, and uh, I'm known by my sheep. And the desire of the Lord is that his sheep know him. And there is a, a servant of the Lord called Job. He said, before I knew you, you of hearing about. And we need to know to have this um, tuned up ear. The sheep needs to recognize that it is the Lord who is speaking. But later on, Job said, before I knew you from hearing about, but now my eyes can see you. A experience that was deeper. And you, my brother and sister, the desire of the Lord is to bring you to have a, a deeper experience with him so that you may know more your shepherd, more your Lord, more the one who is your helper, more your savior because he is good God is good Jesus is good and you need to experience this good the goodness of the Lord because he wants to you uh, sh demonstrate to you his goodness and his love and says that uh, in the same way that the father knows me I also know the Father. So then he speaks of a relationship, an intimacy. In the name of Jesus also is Emmanuel, which means God with us. He wants to have this in intimacy with his sheep. It's not a shepherd that is a w a far away from the sheep, but it's a shepherd that is in the midst of the flock of the Lord. And the Lord is present in this place. And he wants to continue to be presence, present in our lives. And he says the following. And I give my life for my flock. It's natural to sacrifice a sheep for, to support, to sustain the, the shepherd. Who has a flock does that. But the shepherd here, he's different. He lays down his life for the sheep so that we may have life and life in ab abundance. That's why he is the good shepherd. And he says, I give. So his donation that comes from him is a spontaneous decision. It's his desire to do this. Sometimes you think, I said in another opportunity that, who killed Jesus? Who, who killed Jesus? Jesus died. But nobody took Jesus' life away. 
He gave his life. And he speaks of this. He says, nobody can take s something away from me, but I give it from my own and I have the, the power to give and take it away. So Jesus was not sacrificed because somebody sacrificed him for my salvation. But Jesus sacrificed himself for my salvation. He gave himself for me. He took my place on the cross so that my sins could have been forgiven. So that I could have life and life in abundance. So that every tear would have been dried. So that I could go back to heaven. That I, so that I could have a place in eternity. And he did this for you, for me, for each one of us. Because this is the desire of the Good Shepherd. And he speaks about this. In Isaiah 53, he speaks of these things. He took upon himself our sicknesses. He was afflicted and uh, the punishment that brings us peace was upon him. He accepted the punishment. He accepted death. He gave himself so that we could have life and life in abundance. And this is the shepherd, my brother and sister, the good shepherd, the shepherd that gave his life, that gave his life as a donation for each one of us. That's why you are his sheep. That's why I am his sheep. Because he gave us this opportunity of accepting his sacrifice of accepting his death on the cross and recognizing him as our only savior and it says the following but there are still sheep there are other sheep and you who maybe you may have never been a part of a church may have not entered in become a part of a flock or have not elected this good shepherd to be your shepherd, your guide, your helper, the one that answers to your needs, your savior. And he says that he wants you to be a part of his flock. And there are also other sheep that are not from this flock. And also I desire to make them part of my flock and they will hear my voice. And there is going to be only one flock and one shepherd. The desire of the Lord is to make you a part of this flock. To bring you to his, to the presence of the good shepherd. Not into my presence or to a denomination, to a religion. But to bring you, my brother and sister, to guide you to the presence of the good shepherd who is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know that you tonight, you are listening to the voice of the Lord. Because God chose you and He elected you. In order for you to be a part of this flock, of this sheep, they are going to be forever with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, on His new heaven and new earth and His eternity. Amen. Let's sing a song. If this is not love, the ocean dried up. What is the number? This is the shepherd.
glória para o seu nome, Senhor. Aleluia. Glory to God. Now we're going to have a, an adoration to our good shepherd Jesus. A brother and sister can raise your voice. Glorify the name of the Lord. I want to praise our name and thank you for this great love that has been able to reach us. I want to praise the Lord for your death in the cross. And today you are alive waiting for us. We know that we are waiting for your arrival. Lord, we thank you for this word. Thank you for once again to bring to our mind that you are the good shepherd, the one who has taken care of us, that has guided us. Lord, may this word come to, to our hearts, toward our hearts, in a way that we may be completely transformed and that we may have an understanding and recognize that only you are God and there is no other God beside you. I want to praise you, Lord. I want to give a praise for this house, Lord, in which we can adore your name and be fed by your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. The church will stand up. Let us finish the service. This, uh, let's sing the 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 chorus of the song. grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the whole pe all the people of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. You who are here tonight, if you desire a prayer for your life and a clarification of the message and the spiritual gifts, whatever you are, raise your hand and we are going to give you the proper assistance. If you are uh, invited to come back more times. We have services on Wednesday, 8 o'clock, Thursday, 8 o'clock, and Saturday, 7.30 p.m., Sunday in the morning, 10.30 in the morning, and 7.30 p.m. And especially this weekend, we're not going to have, but from the next week on, the our schedule is this, because the, on the f this coming weekend, the church will be gathered on a seminar in the region of Orlando. We'll participate of an event, a seminar, uh, Friday 15, Saturday and Sunday, and 17. The brothers and sisters today have not made their um, registration. There is still opportunity to participate on this wonderful moment with the Lord. Seek the responsible for your assistant group of assistants or brother Elias or any of the uh, ushers and deacons here to clarify any of your uh, questions on do your registration, any other message. So basically, that's it. Amen. If anybody needs an assistant, just raise your hand. Oh, also, the brother is remembering. This weekend, 
when I'm going to have a service here in the church. But the next week, uh, we come back to our regular schedule.